Hey guys, Manuel Sanchez here. As you know, the housing market is extremely hot right now and many of you are selling or maybe considering selling. So in this video, I'll go over how to sell your house fast. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I know I haven't done a video in the past few weeks because, well, my son was born and I couldn't be happier. I have been enjoying his first few weeks. He came out perfect and healthy and I've just been taking in all the awesome experiences as well as celebrating my first Father's Day, which I had a blast. So I kind of logged off from social media and from making videos, but I'm pretty sure all you parents out there can understand. But now I'm back and I'm talking about home sales and specifically about how to sell your house fast. So even though the housing market is running hot through the summer, there's still some indicators that say this might not last. If you saw my last video, I explained why right now may be the best time to sell for the next eight to 10 years. If you missed it though, click on this link right here. Also, please take a quick second to hit the like and subscribe button. It helped me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And with that being said, let's dive right in. This may seem obvious when selling your home, but the most important thing for a successful sale is that you are 100% mentally prepared to sell it. The most successful sellers are ready to move within a month and sell with conviction. Less successful sellers, on the other hand, aren't really sure if they want to sell or maybe want to list to test the market. This, however, is never a good idea because all this is public record, which will appear in your home's history. And when you do decide on actually selling down the line, buyers will take note that you previously had listed and then taken off the market with no apparent reason. Others list super overpriced because they think it's the best house in town, won't sell for anything less, and are in no rush to sell. I hear this so much with sellers overpricing their home and waiting for the market to get to their price. Successful sellers, like I said, make the critical mental shift from thinking about their property as a home to thinking about it as a product. This mental mindset is critical to get the most for your house in the least amount of time. Another thing that is critical as a seller is knowing your mar the market that you are in. Time and time again, you will see national news headlines that may or may not apply to your market. This may be great context, but what really matters is what is happening in your neighborhood. Following local housing news and talking to your local agent that specializes in your market is best. This way you pick the best pricing strategy. The next thing you need to do is look at your home as a buyer. Really take notice at what needs to be fixed, decluttered, or painted. Buyers really take note of the smallest things and sometimes those small details have a big impact for buyers deciding which house to submit an offer on. Us agents will provide you with local statistics and a comparative market analysis that best compares your home to similar properties in the neighborhood, along with a full marketing campaign. And since we're talking about homes and selling and pricing, I'm just gonna come out and say it since every seller has done it, which is look at your Zillow's estimate. I mean, I do it all the time with my house. Yes, it's fine to look at it, but don't take it as 100% solid since Zillow does not look at any upgrades you have done or in what condition your home is in. All it looks at is the basic square footage, bathrooms and rooms, as well as location. For example, if you're in a suburban tract with hundreds of similar houses, yours estimate may be somewhat accurate. But if you're in an older area where there is a mixture of older homes and fully renovated homes, or maybe you're in a higher end area where all the homes are custom, then take your estimate with a grain of salt. Like I said, it's always best for you and your agent to view your home and do a comparative market analysis. Or you can always visit the link down below and get a home value report. And if you want monthly updates, you can sign up for those as well. Now, when it comes to pricing, even though we are in a seller's market and homes are just flying off the market, it is still important to price it accordingly. If you price it too high, it may sit around for weeks, get stale, and possibly have to endure price reductions. If you price it too low, your home may sell too quickly and you'll probably be left wondering if you left money on the table. Unless you price it low to get multiple offers, then you will have buyers bid up to a current market price. As an agent, I look at everything when pricing homes. Most importantly, home conditions and where the market is going. In the famous Wayne Gretzky words, look at where the puck is going, not where it currently is. I look at where the market is going so I can get out in front of it with pricing. Sometimes it's a bit easier when prices are going up, demand is going up, and days on the market is going down, then it makes sense to price it a little bit higher because that's well where the market is going. Now, if it's the other way around, then it's best to price yourself a little bit lower than the competition to be the best deal in the market and first to sell. 
Some sellers I know aren't a fan of this, but in a declining market, you guys have to understand that homes are coming down every day. So the sooner you sell, the less you lose. Once your home hits the market, the first two weeks are the most important. If you're getting showings on a daily basis, then that means your home is priced well. But if you don't get any showings, then it's a clear indicator that you are overpriced. Good rule of thumb is that for every 10 showings, there should be one offer. Now, if there's a lot of showings and no offers, then feedback from your visitors is important to act quickly on it. The home may just need to declutter or a fresh coat of paint. It's important to act quickly, like I said, on feedback, especially now in the age of COVID with so many unemployed, millions of mortgages in forbearance, bankruptcies on the horizon, and another potential wave of COVID. There's so much on the horizon that may impact housing prices after the summer rush is over, so it's smart to factor this into your calculations. Remember that the most important thing as a seller is to sell with conviction and to price your home to where the market is going. And for that, I will always say and will always uh, suggest that you work with a full-time professional realtor. And now here's a quick market update. The biggest update has been in luxury homes. After the luxury market hit a screeching halt in mid-April, it appeared as though luxury houses would just not be revived until 2021. The expected market time was 316 days for homes priced above 1.5 million, which here in San Diego is considered the luxury market. Slowly but surely though, the demand picked up in every price range and the luxury homes came back into the picture. And taking a closer look, the expected market time from for homes priced over 1.5 million came down from 316 days to 107 days. I know that sounds high compared to the overall San Diego County housing market, which sits at 37 days, but it is extremely strong for the upper end and quite an improvement from the 360 day mark reached in mid April. The San Diego market as a whole has currently 19% fewer homes for sale compared to the five year average. And like I said in the past videos, there just isn't that much inventory out there. Uh, for the luxury market, though, there has been an 18% increase in homes placed on the market to the compared to the five-year average. In the past 30 days, it has improved from 118 pending sales to 404 today. That is an astonishing 242% increase in pending sales. That's in the luxury market, so every home priced above 1.5 million. It's important to note, though, that the upper end still takes a lot longer to sell compared to the lower ranges. As for active inventory, it has decreased by 5% in the past two weeks as demand continues to rocket upwards. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you. I really appreciate it. Please hit the like and subscribe button. And of course, feel free to contact me if you want more in-depth information on certain neighborhoods in San Diego. Remember that I am your source for real estate and I'm always here to help and answer all your questions and we'll continue to stay on top of the latest trends, delivering a modern real estate experience for you guys. Until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.